Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Daniel. I'm Matt. I'm Aunt Becky. I'm Grandpa. I'm Tracy. I'm Callie. And we're some of the veggie boys. Here we go. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm. But one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. These are flowers. These are flowers. Yep, they're flowers, all right. Take one? Yeah, go ahead. Um, we can't. Welcome back everyone. It's so nice to see you. We just went for a quick walk through the germination greenhouse just to see how everything was looking. We've got a cool cloudy day on our hands, which is no problem. We can handle that. I was concerned about the temperature in the germination greenhouse because it was cooler and cloudy, but didn't seem to have any problems. Before the morning, we've already got all the animals fed and the eggs collected. Now we're just going through the greenhouses, making sure that everything is okay, nothing needs to be watered. We will find little spots like this right here where there are a few cells that are drier than others, but that's not our biggest concern. Even though it's cloudy and cool today, our past few days have been warm and sunny. It's really pushed a lot of stuff along. Just the growth on the baskets above my head is a telltale sign the way they've pushed out. Because of the warmer weather that is on the way and what we've been dealing with, I think a lot of people are gonna be itching to get started in the gardens. At the time of recording, it is a little too early. Um, <laughs> but there are some people that are gonna be ready to go. Our stuff, our coal crops that we're gonna be putting out into the soil relatively soon, they are looking really good. They just need a few more weeks. But our coal crops that we have for sales, they're a little on the larger side. We got them started a little bit early, so they are looking really good. For example, right here I have some Savoy cabbage. I've also got some Brussels sprouts, and compared to our stuff, these have got some size to them. In greenhouse number four, we have some tomatoes at the front of the greenhouse that are starting to look really nice. But the thing that I've been impressed with is our peppers. The peppers that we had seeded early on for our first planting, they look good. They almost look like they're ready to go in the soil. I think they would need some more size, but I've had some people tell me I'm wrong before. So, I mean, in the next coming weeks, these will be up for sale as well. Now, before I head up top, I want to mention something you will notice. This calf is out here by itself, and they are doing really good. This is a brand new calf. Look at this one. Beautiful. Don't worry, that calf hasn't been there for long. It was just put there. And the reason why it was just put there was because we're working on getting everything pulled out of greenhouse number five, and our calves are going to be going in this section. Which, if I do say so myself, looks pretty nice. We got it cleaned up really, really good. Our wall that we have in place, that looks nice. Cleaning up all this scrap metal and all this other trash that we had here uh, was a big benefit for us. Gave us more room to put stuff. Makes it look a lot cleaner down here. Bonuses all around. But yeah, that's basically the first calf that we're getting for the year that's not gonna be going right in the greenhouse number five. He's gonna be put into a different pen. So I wanted to take all of you for a walk through the greenhouse just to show you how nice everything looks. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, camera does not do it justice. It is beautiful in here. Right when I showed up though, Aunt Rhonda let me know of a little problem that we were having. She just noticed over the past few days. A few of our pots have had this interesting thing happen as to where there's just a giant hole in them. And right down in here, there's a hole that I could Stick, I don't want to stick my fingers down in there, but I did earlier and I stuck my almost whole hand down in the hole. So we've got a rodent or something else digging holes in the greenhouse.
We had thought it was an isolated event, you know, just that first pot all the way up at the front. However, all the way down here at the other end of the greenhouse, we also noticed that we were finding holes burrowed into all of our pots. So we got one right here. And then if I just look around for a few seconds, another one back here. This one's a good one. That one's really down into there. So we're not 100% sure what is causing it, but we do know that they are disrupting the roots of the plant and also pulling out all of the soil and dumping it on the ground. This one also has a hole in it. So that's kind of frustrating. They're making a mess. Again, like I mentioned, we're not sure what's going on, but oh, you can guarantee we're gonna figure it out. It's a bad day for a rodent when Aunt Rhonda's on the case. Oh, she'll find you. What do the girls have you working on this morning, Daniel? Putting hangers on hanging baskets. Boy, they just gave you your favorite job ever. Oh yeah, totally. Coming through. I'll go get him right beep, now. Beep, beep. <laughs> You're not helping me. Coming through. Ah. Beep, beep. Beep, beep, coming through, Cammy. Boy, there's almost an accident in here. Oh boy, here we go. The girls need one inch pots filled for transplanting and we don't have any up here, so I gotta go look for them. Mm -hmm. Time to go on a box hunt. Oh, very specific box that I need hiding among all the other boxes. Where are you? Start back here. Oh, I think this is it. Nope. This is it. <laughs> any box with 800 count in it, yeah, that's what I need. And right when I was coming down here, one of my family members said, oh, hey, can you bring me something? It's like being at the dinner table on Sunday. I'm just handing things around. Some of you may be thinking, is it really necessary to follow the rules when it comes to opening these boxes? Yes, it's necessary to follow the rules because these would all fall out. And there's 800 of them in here. And I want to pick them all up again. What are you seeding here? Zucchini. Ooh -hoo -hoo. We cannot plant the zucchini with our air seeder. So Grammy does it by hand. And then she's also going to be doing pickling cucumbers and then the regular cucumbers. Believe me, we've offered to do it ourselves, but she enjoys that job. That's a special job for her. What did you name him? I didn't name him. Sadie named that one hamburger and the one that came previously cheeseburger. <laughs> That's how you know Sadie belongs here. She's already naming the cattle the names that are most important. Okay. We got Super Bell Blue and Tangerine Punch. Uh, she'd name them like cheeseburger, hamburger, sirloin of beef, T-bone, Chuck Roast. Chuck Roast. That's what we should be naming our cattle. Charles Roast. Charles Roast. Oh, that would work. <laughs> it's like, come here, flank steak. Some of you may notice the side-by-side -side is a lot cleaner now. <laughs> Allegedly, dad got bored and cleaned the side-by-side, -side, but I don't think I've ever seen my father bored in his life. So, Dana, why didn't you tell us Sadie was so good at naming cattle when you married her? I just wanted you to be surprised. To be honest, I'm surprised too. Yeah, Dana, what can I say? You never really find out everything about a woman until you marry her. And you found out something cool. Yeah, my wife's good at naming cows. As you can see, so far today, we've just been kind of going from greenhouse to greenhouse. We've also been filling up anything that the girls need. At this point in the year for filling up the greenhouse, we have a few niche things that we're working on. We also have stuff that just needs to be moved. 
there's always plenty of work to do in the greenhouses. You just got to find the right things to do. And thankfully, we really never have to worry about finding stuff to do. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just always there. We always know what we got going on. While I have a second, I wanted to show you what we have up in front of the farm market. We've got all different types of cold crops, lettuces, and parsley. Uh, we've already shown you that, but we also moved up a few hardier flowers, some stuff that can take the cooler weather and people have been picking it up. What we do have up here looks really, really nice. And the people, they are excited to see flowers up and ready to sell. Now I've got to run inside, check on Callie and then get back down to work. What are you doing? I'm doing this. Oh, you're doing the numbers. Have you guys ever wondered how we get those huge hanging cherry tomatoes that are so popular? Well, I'm about to show you, ready? Okay, so we have our tomato. This is a tumbling Tom Red. So we're gonna grab one of them. And then here's the secret, ready? Right here in the middle. And that's it, one tomato plant. That's all it takes for those huge hanging cherry tomatoes. I, I know, you're like, that was the big secret all this time? Yeah, that's the big secret. Uh, also, the fact where we put them in the greenhouse helps out a lot. And do not get them mixed up. that's the most important thing. What am I doing? No, I'm talking about that. He said, do not get them mixed up. Are these all tumbling toms? These are red. Fruit. I don't want to mess up. Okay, I'm doing tumbling tom red. Those are all yellow and I don't want you to push them. So Man, Daniel got here. He made sure we didn't mess anything up. That was, that was pretty intense. How would you feel if you bought a red one and it turned out to be yellow? Oh, you know what? Daniel's just thinking about the customers. I'm always thinking, sometimes about customers. So we've got our yellow hanging cherry and now our red hanging cherry all done. Now I'm gonna mention a few more things with our potted tomatoes because I'm sure a lot of you are like, come on, you have to do something else. Uh, but these also are just one tomato plant in each of these pots. These are hanging cherry. We add a 13 11 11 time release fertilizer. That's the, those little fertilizer pellets that we're adding in. Those are time release. So every time you water, you get a little bit of fertilizer. We also add some miracle Grow when we water. But yeah, look at that. This is what these tomatoes look like in no time. Because these tomatoes are so popular, they're gonna sell out fast, like really, really fast. And then we're gonna have customers coming later on in the year saying, I got a tomato hanging cherry here last year. Do you have any more? And we'd have to tell them no. However, as you guys just saw, we planted a few more. So we might be able to say, oh yes, we do have more. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, it seems like you filled this machine once or twice. Once or twice. A day. An hour. A minute. Alrighty, alrighty. It is lunchtime, and it looks like we are having taco salads today. Um, that sounds good. I'm hungry for taco salads. We got finished off with lunch. We're back out here in the greenhouse. Just gonna be doing the same thing. Uh, constantly filling up this wagon and taking it down over the hill. It does feel like there's storms moving in though. So I don't know if that's gonna halt our progress. We'll just have to wait and see. I think we do have someone extra down in the greenhouse with us now. Oh yeah, it's not every day. You get to see a princess playing in the dirt. Are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, good. Flower. What color are they? What color are they? Purple. Purple? 
Pink? Callie is down around back with Uncle Daniel. They're walking through all the mud in her brand new sneakers. I have boots for her. I just, she doesn't seem to like wearing the boots all the time. I gotta, I gotta take her and have her pick out a pair of boots. Cause I think if I have her pick out a pair of boots, then she'll be fine with wearing them. I don't know, maybe it's a phase. We just need to get the big purple rain boots back out. She'd wear those anywhere. Oh, you didn't see that. Don't tell the girls, please. I'll blame the mouse or whatever's been causing the issues. Make it. She's just make it. I wanted to come down around back and check on the cattle, make sure they were okay. We have a few of the younger cattle, some calves in the barn, but the rest of them are out on pasture. The fact that the grass has been growing so fast lately, I think is encouraging them to get out there a little bit more. If we can keep them out there munching on grass as much as possible, we'll do it. The fact that they're already making every effort to get out and enjoy their whole day grazing, that's a good sign for the year. Well, everyone, we kind of had a little bit of a change with the weather. The weather wasn't too nice, so we weren't able to continue working outside. I just got home. I'm working on dinner. We are making some teriyaki chicken with rice and broccoli. If you can hear the background. We've got some hungry babies, so Lauren is working on feeding babies. So I'm working on feeding Lauren, myself, and Callie, and Lauren's working on feeding babies. I mean, everybody's feeding something around here. Every single time I cook, all I can think about is how happy I'm gonna be when we got all our own produce again. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a fun time. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I just wanna take time to mention I am by no means a professional chef. I just, I can cook well enough to keep my belly full. So that's, that's good enough for me. And yeah, that's, that's really good for me. I just got finished off with dinner, so we are gonna sit down and eat. Lauren is still working on feeding babies, so we are not gonna go bother her, but that does mean this is where we're gonna end the video today. Just a reminder, we're trying to reach 200,000 subscribers, so if you've not already, please remember to subscribe. Also, liking the video helps us out a ton, so we would appreciate it if you did that. This is where we're gonna end the video. I am hungry, and that means Bye bye